Whenever y'all are ready. Whenever you're ready. ready, man. Five, four. Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Podcast. I'm Jeff Burlingame, joined with my co-host, Paul Glass. And we have a very special guest here today from a uh, fairly new tackle box company, Buzzbee. If you guys haven't heard of it, we feature it in our videos quite a bit. If you see us out fishing, Paul and I, or if you see us on Instagram. Uh, so we have Caleb Sutton here today to talk all things Buzzbee. Caleb, how you doing, man? Doing good, fellas. Doing good. How are y'all doing? Doing great, man. I appreciate uh, potentially potentially the most enthusiastic countdown. Hands Paul, down. Hands down. no, it's not close. Hundred <laughs> percent. It was a nine point eight out of ten. Solid <laughs> energy. I appreciate it. I think that means good things to come for this episode. So, before we get into it, guys, of course, as always, if you enjoy the episode, be sure to subscribe to the podcast anywhere you're listening to this thing right now, and drop us a review. The five star reviews really, really help. Throw us some comments. Let us know what you want to hear about on future episodes. Let us know what we can do to improve the show. And, of course, try to follow us everywhere else, Instagram, Facebook, at Burley Fishing. Oh, we're on TikTok now. I don't know if, like, that's what the kids do nowadays. We got a dang TikTok, and it's uh, it's got, like, four or five posts. Just, uh, we, we had one banger go up this week. I'll just say that. Give myself a little pat on the back. A little, like, 80,000 views or something for uh, just holding a fish. So, I don't know. TikTokers like they love it and they hate that. Like you've got the uh, the anti hunting and fishing people on there, like being mad. But then most people are like, oh, that's pretty rad because it was I, I just caught a fish on the phantom spider from Lunker Hunt, and apparently that like lights people up. So it was a lot of fun. Anyway, so you can follow me on TikTok there too, uh, and the YouTube right. Follow us, Burley Fishing on YouTube. We just passed. Uh, we're almost at six thousand subs. Just past a thousand followers on, on Instagram. We're, you know, we're coming for you, Busby. I know you have like, I don't know, 157 million followers, something like that. Yeah, I think yeah. it's uh, three, three million. Oh, three wait. million, dude. You're three million. Wait, wait, wait. Three thousand. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, we'll get My to talk about all. He's giving himself a, 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 an extra zero there. I like it. <laughs> Couple, couple extra adding, zeros, right? Keep adding those zeros. Uh, but yeah, before we get into it too, Caleb, if you want to drop anywhere that people should be following you guys, uh, where yes, can we find you at? You can find us on Instagram. That's our main our main uh, platform. So it's Buzzbee Fishing. That's B-U-Z-B-E Fishing. Um, and then also our Facebook as well. So it's Buzzbee Fishing. So all of our posts that we post on Instagram automatically get sent to Facebook. Awesome. Fantastic. And you guys put out some high quality stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen any of their videos out, but they are, uh, they're lit. I, it sounds I, like the most boring thing ever. Like this is a box that I put my lures in, but like, yeah, dude, but that's it's all the cool stuff. <laughs> it's like, a stu- there are some stunning photos in there for sure. And there's like me with the Fu Manchu, the quarantine stash, right? Yes. Like talking about the box. The it, content that people want. <laughs> it, it is the con. I will say this: it's the content people want because you think tackle box, like Paul said, is kind of boring. But then you run it over with a truck, and then you chuck it in the water, and you do all sorts of wacky stuff with it. So I, I can appreciate the content, man. I, I love the content game you guys are on right there. For sure, appreciate it. All right, all right so Paul, episode, show me. Episode, yeah, can I? Well, just, we're, just, you're just skipping again. Part. Jeff likes to skip Let's straight to the show me, bruh. <laughs> I write In the notes. In conclusion, I'm... this episode is over. <laughs> yep, and we're done. Good job, Buzzy. Thanks for being right, here, man. Caleb. That's it. Uh, I'll ring in, talk to y'all next week, next Thursday, <laughs> yeah. maybe. Bro, for, we didn't for... even get to backup beers. We got a, we got a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, episode, Paul, proceed. <laughs> episode question, if we were doing things the way we normally do them. Episode yeah. question. So I wear a lot of long sleeve fishing shirts. You have a couple options when it comes to a fishing shirt. Number one option is, do you wear a hood or do you not have a hood? So my question for you is, when you are purchasing a shirt that you're going to wear when you're fishing, are you a hood dude or are you a hoodless dude? I got to know. So you're asking me. I'm Super asking you specifically, and then Jeff can answer. I'm Guess just going to let him answer for those of you that can't see him live right now. <laughs> I do not own a hooded shirt. Mm. Do you not? Wait, where are you located? We're not Louisiana. Uh, do you ever wear a long sleeve shirt, like a sun shirt? Yeah, sometimes sometimes I wear a long sleeve shirt. Um, I'm I'm infamous for being the shirtless guy on the boat. Uh, <laughs> there it is. All right. <laughs> like you you cast like full flex. <laughs> <laughs> no shirt. I do put suntan lotion on though. That's my I'm guy very, right yeah, there. I, I try to I try to stay tan for sure. That's my 
guy right there. I like that. So, so we're talking like SPF uh, four, uh, six, probably fifteen. I like, Fif- I like uh, fifteen. 15 okay. yeah. That sounds like for me. That sounds like rubbing on a sun sunburn. <laughs> Paul, is, Paul is like a SPF seventy five, like minimum. Bru- don't don't trash me like that. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm whiter than the day is long. There's nothing I can do about it. But I'm a thirty five guy. That will 35. that's right okay. where we need to be. I don't it, like to thirty fives like you get a really bad sunburn and you're like, Oh man, we gotta really lather up today. Let's put some thirty five on. Okay, we're all just gonna trash me. All right, cool, man. So you're not a you're not a hooded shirt guy. That's neat. All right, Jeff, how about <laughs> neat. you? Good talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm with you, man. Hoods are dumb. Who wears hoods? I wear, <laughs> my, mine. Yeah, I I have a plethora of sun shirts. I do have a couple that don't have hoods, but honestly, I don't know why. I just don't like wearing them. So I always wear the hooded ones, and I also always wear a neck gaiter. So I'm like the complete opposite of you, bro. Like, hey, well. I, Buzzfeed like, is about to release some some net gators now. Oh, oh, they, they're gonna be ooh, the first the first new product drop. The, they're we're gonna they're gonna be the they're gonna they're gonna be like everything else. Like they're gonna be like the high quality gator though, right? Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, that's a hard yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm buying twelve. Oh. I want the big B right here. <laughs> just a big old B. Which, yeah. by the way, I'm just gonna throw this out there here because I don't know where it belongs within the show. <laughs> but did you know that your 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 boxes actually attract bees? It attracts bees, huh? It attracts bees. The buzz bee attracts bees. Paul and I were at a buddy's house doing some filming, and we had our buzz bees, and these bees were just freaking chasing the box. No joke. I was like, "Are you kidding me, right now?" <laughs> We should have filmed it. Like that that would have made a lot of sense. So fun fact, we actually made the box to be a hive for bees. <laughs> it was supposed to be a beehive. Yeah. And, uh, instead it just like for some reason the, the bees just couldn't produce enough honey in them. So we were just like, Hey, why don't we make this tackle box? This is not profitable. <laughs> honey does not make us any money. Honey All is right, not we're working. Swi- <laughs> we're switching. Dude, they were friendly though. I'll be honest, only friendly bees. I have not yet been stung while loading and unloading a Busby. So that's good. <laughs> Luckily, they're super friendly about it. Yeah. All right. So, episode question complete. Everyone knows I'm not a hood guy. They're stupid. So, uh, <laughs> moving on, we do our weekly check in. We'll find out what everyone's been up to this week. I will say the big thing that's been going on uh, in the prior weeks, and depending on when you see this, this would be like, what, two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks ago, um, it would have been iCast. So for those of you who don't know, iCast is basically a ginormous trade show where the entire industry essentially puts everything on pause. Uh, go, typically would go typically. into like a gigantic facility. Uh, you'd be seeing people doing demos. You'd see corporate co- collaborations happening. You'd see forums, learning seminars, lots of fun, all giving away of things, testing out a product, all of the above. Um, I guess it's also typically they're they're they will give away like their best in show and they have roughly 15, 20 categories. Is it up to 30? I don't know. It's a bunch of categories and there's everything from lures to, to freaking coolers and ice fishing and all these, you know, different categories. And then, you know, they, they will, I think it's only buyers and media get to vote, which is kind of stupid, but it is what it is. And so they vote on whoever on, they decide who wins. Um, so all the rich folks decide who wins, um, you know, and why it's important. I mean, obviously it's important for the industry because you get a lot of people together who would, who would otherwise not get a chance to meet face to face. Um, everyone gets to, to swap beers and, and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, shoot the crap, so to speak. Um, but you also, you also get to talk about things like conservation. You get to talk about like access and you get to talk about recruitment, people getting into fishing and, and talk about all the things that really kind of help promote the industry. Uh, and, and, and there are talks from the, the ASA, the American Sport Fishing Association and blah, 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 blah. It is a really <laughs> huge deal. This year is a little weird because this year, a instead little. of instead of booking a flight, uh, you know, arranging to have all your stuff, like by stuff, I mean, like all your materials, your product that you're going to be, you know, promoting and all that. And, you know, getting a group of people to come with you, arranging to have like a party and all this and ship it all out there and then be there for like two weeks. Instead of doing all that, you filled out some forms, uh, you clicked send, uh, copy paste, <laughs> and uh, uh, some attachments, 
and then you sat at home uh, wondering what everyone else was doing. So um, thanks to what what's going on right now. So I guess um, the the first question I have is Caleb, can you tell us a little bit because you were at ICAST last year and that was yep. your first year. <laughs> yeah. Um, first year. Yeah. Tell us like help us understand like the gravity of the difference between like going to ICAST for the first time and then like this year being like compare and contrast. And like, yeah, what, what, were, what was that? What was that? What was, what, what was better? Was last week like? Yeah, which one was more fun? Yeah, well, so, uh, and, well, <laughs> actually, they, they both have their positives and negatives, right? Mm, um, sure. So, obviously, last year, it was it was really cool participating in the, you know, the first ICAST. That was actually when we released our product, released our company. Um, and so, like, we built up to that. And fun fact, we actually didn't have, um, like, all of our product until probably a couple days before ICAST. We were just like, <laughs> okay, like, this is great. We had an air shipped in. We had, like, a couple, like, you know, we had, like, 12 shipped in. And we're like, all right, this is great. We can show everyone this product. We get our we get our final product a month from now. Um, well, but, were you, how many shirts did you sweat through, like, like checking the tracking on that <laughs> shirt? Yeah, it was... <laughs> Oh, man. Well, so it was, it, was like, it was actually just the lids, though. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a story of its own. Do y'all want to dive into that right now? Or you want to get into that product? Dude, hit me. No, that's fantastic. Give us, so, give us everything. All right. Yeah. So um, actually, on our first order, we uh, we had an issue with our lids, and we made all of our lids. And at the very end, they were just like, um, "Hey, by the way, none of these lids are waterproof." And I was just like. I was like, wait, wait, what? I was like, what do you mean they're not waterproof? I was like, how are y'all not checking this? Like, how is this not a, you know, where's the quality control aspect here? And they were like, yeah, so like, it's going to cost upwards of 20 grand to replace this. Like, we want you to pay for it. And I looked at them and I was like, absolutely not. It's it's not going to happen, right? And I was like, y'all didn't quality control it. Like, y'all need to fix this. And um, and so we got into a kind of predicament, but, um, but they ended up replacing everything. And so wow. I, I did have the, the original boxes with the non-waterproof lids for ICAST, but I was like, we need the waterproof ones for ICAST like, <laughs> so we can show people the actual, you know, final product. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah. it was just the, just the gasket. Yeah. Uh, the, that little, uh, that little piece of, that little strip of rubber that runs around the outside that when it clamps down, keeps the, uh, keeps the old water out. Yeah. Kind yeah, of that, that was a big deal on our, on our, <laughs> um, so yeah, every. But, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, but but so last year though, it was a huge like I guess pain in the ass because it was like, all right, we have to get all of our material, all of our trade show booth and everything to iCast, and then it was like the setup process. And so that was actually the first time ever setting up our trade show booth. Um, it took maybe sixteen hours to set up, and it was just like between two people. So it was like me wow. and like one of my best friends like setting this thing up, and we were just like. <laughs> Dude, it was like if you if you saw this thing, it literally looks like a giant puzzle of like not those. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was just a giant puzzle. It was just pretty much like put all this together and it, it forms this giant trade show booth, but it comes in a in a in a trunk. In a two like a probably wow. four foot by two foot trunk, and I'm just like, holy crap. <laughs> this oh 27 gosh. by 16 scrim fits in a four by four suitcase <laughs> here you, yeah. here you go <laughs> yeah. i mean it was it was definitely a lot easier this year just like not mm-hmm. having to do that but then again it's yeah. like you don't you don't get the full experience because while you're at right. iCash you're able to you know show your product and because we do have like a higher quality product a lot of people like to touch and feel it and like seeing a picture of it's one thing, but when someone actually gets to get in their hands and be like, okay, you can feel how durable it is. You can see how the interchangeable uh, bins on the inside kind of move around and everything. Um, you can really see the quality in person. Uh, oh, so. that is, so I actually want to talk about that. We're skipping ahead. See, the show notes are useless. <laughs> you and Jeff are correct. Why would I even one, read them? <laughs> <laughs> one of my, one of my favorite, one of my favorite parts about this box. I remember the first time I ordered it, I ordered it because I was like, this looks sweet. It looks awesome. The photos are phenomenal. I'm going to buy it, but it's kind of expensive. But I'm like, dude, new company. I get how it is. So just so you know, I'm I'm a buyer in my my day job. So like, I know know what it's like 
to see a product when it first comes out and I know how things get financed and I know why things are expensive when you're only making X amount of them and selling X amount of them. So like, dude, I got to see how this works. It looks awesome. I'm, I'm buying it. Screw it. It showed up. I opened up the box and do like, I, every, I love this about the mar- everything from the marketing materials to the tag, to the way the tag is attached. Like every single piece of this, like was like screaming, like this is a high quality product. And I'm like unpacked. I'm like, dude, this is legit. Holy crap. And then I pull out the box. And I'm like, this thing is straight up bulletproof. Like I have, I'm ready to put this in my weight vest and like go into <laughs> battle. Like this is not a problem. I'm good. It was, it, it, it legit like top to bottom. Everything was super high quality. And I can see how it's very easy for someone to like write on their website, like super high quality, durable box. Like there are right. some other tackle yeah. companies that make tackle boxes that have that on their website. And I have some of their boxes and I'm like, garbage, goodbye. Thanks for playing. Like, no, yeah. I, it's just like, no, this is like, it is a, it absolutely is a difference maker. And I love how the marketing materials, the website, dude, even like the, I, I know you guys are using like a, a pretty neat, relatively new process on your website to like handle all the shipping and everything. But it was so simple. It was seamless, super clean. And like, it all matches what you guys are selling on the box. So I think that is awesome. I don't know whose idea that was. I'm assuming that's you because I don't know how many other people are involved. Yeah. Well done. That's like uh, one of my, yeah, fa- definitely I love appreciate that. It. Yeah. So I definitely love to hear like feedback as far as like all the little things that a lot of people don't really care about. It's like, Oh, like the packaging, does that really matter? Like the plastic bag that it comes with it being all decorative and like every little tiny detail It's like when I was actually working on the product and developing every aspect of it, it was like these tiny little things that I was like, this has to be perfect. And they would just be like, why do you care about this? This (laughs) tiny little thing doesn't matter. And what I told him was, I was like, well, the thing is, it's a tiny little thing. It's just like one one tiny grain of sand. And I was like, but we have so many things. We're going to get all of these things perfect. And now we have a big handful of sand. And I was like, so even though this one thing individually doesn't matter, when you put them all together, they they really make a difference. And um, I felt vindicated telling my wife that I paid that much money for a box. I was like, yeah. in he your waited face. until after it came. He waited way until. after. Way. Like, no, I'm just playing. It's not that. It. <laughs> he was opening it in the living room, and she was like, "Oh, that's pretty neat. Look what's going on there." He was like, "Oh, the, the, this thing is tech box. It's pretty cool, huh?" And he got her to say like, "Yeah, that's pretty sweet." And he was like, "It was fifty bucks shipped." And she was like, "Oh, great. It seems like it'd be worth well more than that." <laughs> I'll be. Yeah, I will. That's how I Paul gets be, away with stuff. Oh, easily. I'll be honest though. It is. It has become. And I. I kind of wanted to talk about this too, but I, and and I want to go backwards while I also right now go forwards. It has become, Jeff talked about it. We talked about Busby five, six, seven, eight times on the show already before you being here because I use it as like, it is my everyday box. It honestly, it stays 50% empty. And what I do is the only stuff that stays in there 50% of the time is like what I use every single day when I go fishing. And when I know where I'm going to go, like for the weekend, I'm a big prepper. Obviously my two page show notes should show that. I, (laughs) I, um, I literally spend the night before I'm like thinking about like, okay, like I'm checking depth maps. I'm looking at like the type of fish that we're going to catch. I know what the water temp's going to be, weather, all that type of stuff. So I'm figuring out like what I'm likely going to use. And I put two or three of them inside of that box before I go every night. And like, that is like my instant grab. And I got a little library of what I need for that night. It is in a kayak. It is, we've talked about on the show multiple times. It's a game changer because the customizability, the way that things are laid out, dude, it's, it's awesome. It, it is a game changer. So I love it. Well worth yeah. it. I, yeah, especially, I'm, yeah, yeah especially customizing it. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things that when I actually went to, when I got my first boxes in, you know, Busby boxes, cause I had the same experience. I was like, Oh man, here's my boxes, like transferring all my stuff over. And when I opened it up and I was like trying to transfer all the, all the things from my old boxes into these new ones, it was such a pain in the ass to, to reach in and grab every little thing out of each compartment and move it over. And when I put it in the Busby box, I was like, oh, I don't like this location. I want to move it over here. And you could do one of two things. You could either, one, just take the whole bin and move it somewhere else. Or two, you can actually take the bin out and just dump it out in your hand. And mm-hmm. so instead of taking, you know, pulling tiny little weights out one by one and spending five minutes, instead, you just take out the bin and it takes a total of three seconds of, you know, dumping it out in your hand. 
Dude, I didn't even think about that when I was actually doing it. I have all these. I have two of the little one by ones, the little small ones, and yeah. I use I use those for my uh, I use those for like my perch and my bluegill flies. And uh, I didn't even realize that I did that one day when I was like taking those out because I wasn't going to use them. I was just like, oh, poof, look, they're all done. Psh, now I'm going to fill up with something else. And now I've realized that I just did that. <laughs> like, just taking it for granted. Dude. I totally did. That is. <laughs> I awesome. think. To to real real quick, just like draw a picture here for everybody, because we're jumping all around on the show notes here that 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 allegedly exist. These show notes, I don't know, I've never seen them. So, what we're talking about though is this is a modular tackle box, right? So, I mean, maybe for for the folks at home, could you could you paint us a picture and say like this is what this box looks like versus what they know and use all the time, like the classic, I don't know, Plano plastic ones or whatever other fancy, you know, Plano edge or something like that. Is there something to compare it to? But for the, for the folks at home, what are we talking about here? What does this box really like look like? Yeah. And what sets it apart <laughs> in 10 words or less go. I'm just, I'm kidding. So as <laughs> many words as you want. <laughs> I need 12 <laughs> for sure. So 12, 12 is pushing it, but okay, sure. <laughs> So, so what actually gave me the idea of this um, is, well, well, do we want to jump into this, or do we do we want to just follow the the show not, show notes here? Well, where are we where are we going with this here? So, so once upon a time ago, what we were going to talk about was what was happening in our week. Then we got to iCast. Then we started talking about like basically the show meet, and we jumped right into that. And we, so, I don't know, Paul. What should we do now? Should right. we should we recap the week and then nope. go back to that, or should we just go to that? I like where we were. Tell me tell me how the box came to be. Talk to me about kind of the genesis of where the idea came from, and then kind of where you arrived. All right, so you, so you want me to start at the very beginning here because this is about to be a long ramble. I don't want day negative time. one. I want day one. <laughs> you want <laughs> day one of what aspect of it? <laughs> no, I know I don't want negative one. I want to know when you had the idea, what kind of spurred it on, and then how, and then what, like how that kind of led you into where you are right now. Yeah. So pretty much it all it all kind of started um, because for Christmas I was like, hey, like. I had an ex-girlfriend at the time and she was just like, Hey, what do you want for Christmas? And she was like, you always get me a nice Christmas gift. Like I want to get you something nice this year. And, um, and I was like, you know, really into fishing and everything. And I just never really thought about tackle boxes as like a, you know, like never really tried to research and find, you know, better quality tackle boxes. And so I just kind of looked at it and I was like, you know what? Like I want a really nice tackle box. And I was like, I was like, give me, give me some good tackle trays. Like, you know, these are constantly breaking and falling apart. And, um, and like, that's what I want. And so like, I didn't know if it existed. I just kind of figured it, it existed because everything in fishing has a low end, but it also has like a very high end as well. It's all very expensive. And so, you know, Christmas came, we exchanged gifts and opened my present and I had one of the competitors and I just opened it up and I was literally like, what is this? I was like, <laughs> I got you this super nice gift. And this is what you got me, you know? Like, oh man. And You're I feeling real good. Things. And, and then is that, suddenly, is that when she became an ex <laughs> at that moment? <laughs> Bye. So, yeah, yeah. Later. So, yeah, so I learned two things that day. Well, first, I should have kept my mouth closed. <laughs> and uh, second, they just didn't have any high-quality tackle boxes out there. Because she said, she was like, hey, I did a bunch of research. This was, like, the highest-rated one I found. Like this is You can say it. You got a groove tackle box, and you were like, <sighs> you can say it. You got a groove. <laughs> and, uh, well, this was, this was actually, man, this was three, four years ago probably. Oh, yeah, this was okay. like, yeah, this was probably four years ago. And um, so I was like, yeah, you know, this there's really not a high quality tackle box. Like, why don't I, you know, start this journey or whatever? Mm -hmm. And um, and so it really never made sense to me either why there wasn't a higher quality tackle box. Because me and my buddies just for years would always use, you know, the lower quality boxes um, that had, had the dividers and they just had tons of problems with them. They were constantly breaking, the hinges would break, the latches would break. We hated the little dividers on the inside. And uh, so we were just well, like, I have, to, I have to figure out which ones go in the back and which ones go in the front. And I have to read this I clear piece them. of plastic I have to and cut I have to get myself. My, my pocket knife out to make it fit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then you pick up your square bill and it pulls out five dividers and you're like, all right, cool. Exactly. <laughs> it's like hooks are sliding under yeah. and, you know, you turn the box upside down, you shake it up, stuff's transferring all over and it's like. You, you spend all this time setting up your box and then you open it up and it's like, all right, it's all mixed up again. So it's just like, we were just like, all right, this is kind of a pain in the ass. 
Um, so then we were just like, all right, there has to be something better. And we did a bunch of research. There simply wasn't. So we were like, all right, let's try to, you know, make something. And so we just pretty much listed out every single issue that we found. We were just like, here's all the issues that we found with all the boxes. Um, and how do we fix them? And so we just like listed out a bunch of, you know, example or a bunch of, um, pretty much, um, you know, ways, ways to fix all the problems. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we did a bunch of research online, too, and we were like, I wonder what other problems people were having. And we read tons of reviews of, um, you know, the competition and what, what was all out there. And we were just like, man, everyone else is kind of having the same issues that we're having. And um, so we just kind of compiled that. and We're like, all right, so here's, you know, what's most important. This is what we need to get rid of. Uh, this is what we need to fix. And so then we started kind of engineering it. Um, so we actually seeked out a engineer in um, – in Lafayette. So there it's like in Louisiana, it's, um, it's kind of known for oil, like big oil, oil field town. And, um, so we went to this engineering firm and they did mostly, um, they did mostly like oil field work, right. Or oil field engineering. I'm like, man, if these guys are like, if they make a mistake, like someone dies in the oil field, which (laughs) is like, you know, they have a lot of, they have like a lot of pressure on them to get everything perfect. Stakes are pretty high. Yeah, the stakes are very, very high. Like they don't, they don't mess up, right? And so I was like, y'all need to make, you know, like our box. And um, so we actually had it engineered through through an engineering firm. And the engineering process was a long time. Like <laughs> it was, I truthfully can't even remember. It was, it was minimum six months. Maybe it was a year, but it, it was probably six months engineering because it's like they would engineer stuff. And we'd look at it and be like, oh, let's fit, let's change this. Actually, let's tweak this and. So we spent a ton of time of engineering. How uh, much? But, how much fun was that? <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was fun, but what wasn't fun was paying the bill. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, because that's fair. We, we have we have roughly probably there's about uh, sixty thousand engineering in the colony twenty eight. Holy so, crap! Yeah, so there's a ton of engineering to make that thing like absolutely perfect. Unbelievable. And. Um, and so, like, after after the engineering was done, we were just kind of like, all right, this thing has to get manufactured. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> now we got to make it, for sure. Yeah. No question. Yeah. So how did that – what That's did awesome. that process look like of being like, okay, who's going to make this for us? Because I'm sure you had, like, your CAD drawings and, you you know, you had your, your mock-ups. And, you know, like, how did you – I mean, how, I do this for a living, so I know how hard it is to go find a good supplier – how difficult and you guys are not making this yourselves right like you're not making these in the basement it, there's they're unbelievable but like how what was that process of like or like vetting suppliers and trying to find someone who you thought was really gonna work with you and make something that you thought was gonna stand up to your standards yeah so so initially like like the, the product was all we all wanted it based on quality we wanted a super high quality product we wanted it to be pretty much the best tackle box available and um so we were just like Obviously, we thought we wanted to ma- be made in the United States. So we were just looking at injection molding facilities in the United States um, and like molds. So like to have an injection mold, like to have the product injection molded, you have to buy these big giant molds that are just solid steel and have a ton of technology in them. They're and, not yeah, inexpensive. <laughs> they are not, not inexpensive. Yeah. And so pretty much like the first one we met with, they were just like, so like here's you know pretty much we were easily in the six figures and we weren't even through like you know three parts of the box and they were just like by the way each individual bin has to have its own mold right so like the one by one has to have a mold the one by two has a mold the one by three has a mold and um and they were like the latches need a mold the bottom piece needs a mold (laughs) oh my god the lid needs a mold and if they made a plastic molded yeah. and so we're wow. just like okay great so like how what did that okay did you do that over the phone or was that in person oh that was that was definitely in person so <laughs> how did that feel like walking was that how did that feel like walking out of the office being like they want like 24 million to make my <laughs> <laughs> i was like man like maybe i could try to buy like you know the Patriots, the the team. Or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, damn! Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was oh like, shit, God. man. What's like, the I better sports guy? team for this for this amount? <laughs> oh, you better. And uh, but yeah, they were they were upper six figures for sure. It was like, and then and then they were just like, oh yeah. And by the way, there's probably going to be a bunch of like, 
issues when the mold comes in and we're gonna have to adjust it so that's gonna be more also <laughs> and i was just like holy shit you know like and i was like all right well this i was like i was like this company just doesn't know what they're talking about there's there's probably more companies that you know know what they're so talking many. about so many yeah. more <laughs> and so also it was kind of a pain in the ass because we we were having to have all these companies sign ndas at the same time and so they were just kind of like, oh, like, well, what are we signing here? And like, so it's back and forth having them sign an NDA before sharing with them, right? Yeah. And so everyone uh, who doesn't know and hasn't messed with NDAs, it stands for non-disclosure agreement, which basically means that that company that you're talking to can't be like, dude, this box kicks a whole bunch of butt. Uh, bro, we yeah. should probably make a couple of these because I got some molds in the back. And like, <laughs> <laughs> we already have the molds. We don't even need this guy. I told this guy it cost six million. That was a lie. No, I just... <laughs> <laughs> just for those who don't know what an NDA is. And then a lot of companies, the second you send them paperwork that says like this is a binding legal agreement, such as an NDA and like that exists in perpetuity like forever, uh, everyone gets a little weird. So yeah, I can I can imagine that that was probably not fun to try and set up a conversation with someone who's basically going to send you a huge bill and then also be like, yeah, but we're probably going to tell everybody about it. <laughs> we're just going to make it ourselves. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, so that was, that was a pain in the ass. Um, but, but when I left there, I was just like trying to, the main thing was, could we fund the molds, but still make a product that we could sell at a competitive price. Yep. And so we like, even, even at that first factory, it was really, really expensive. And we were just like, man, like, how do we get the product? How do we get the product cost mold, uh, down? And they were just like, well, you make a bigger mold. <laughs> they were like, you just spend more money on the molds. And we were just like, you gotta be kidding me. And so they were talking about, you know, bigger, more expensive molds. But then once again, the the price just really wasn't getting down. And we were just like, all right, you know, this 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 company might just be an anomaly. And so we actually contacted a bunch of, you know, plastic molding facilities across the United States and um, was trying to source it here in the United States. And once again, they were just all really, really high. And um, like even even our cheapest one, it's like if we would have it produced here in the united states then it would have been roughly like like we'd be selling the box for like double than what it is right now easily be, you know 80 to 100 dollars like and we're oh, just man. like is someone easily. gonna pay 79.99 for a box like yeah well and some of that i mean like just so people know like this is like a huge in the fishing industry in general this is a huge deal i mean like when you look at uh like when some people will see like fly fishing rods They'll look at the Cabela's rod and they'll be like, okay, well, that costs like 150 bucks. Uh, but this Sage rod costs like literally six or seven hundred dollars. Like, what? The, they're actually not, no, well, not that Sage and a Cabela's rod are like not that far off in quality because they're a huge disparity in quality. Um, but one of the biggest disparities in the price is the fact that Sage and a bunch of other rod manufacturers who make high quality rods, they make them in the USA. And that is the difference. Honestly, that is one of the main differences in price and fishing rods. And that's like what a lot of people don't understand. It's like when you buy like a Cashin or, or, or like a St. Croix. Um, yeah, you pay like probably a 30 or 40 percent premium. But a lot of that is coming from the fact that like someone in the United States is making that rod. And that comes down to a lot of different factors like labor, importing product, uh, the ability for like the, all the things that companies have to do in the United States that companies in the overseas don't have to do. And so that's why. You know, a lot of companies are able to make super competitive, high quality product. Um, unfortunately, they're not able to make it in the USA. And sometimes, I, you know, it, it's just a reality of like not not just the fishing industry, but like, you know, the planet Earth, um, you know, <laughs> as it is today. And so that's, you know, what what Caleb's talking about is something that like a lot of folks wrestle with is, um, you know, if you didn't start your business like 50 or 60 years ago on your own and you couldn't make it yourself and grow it like buck knives, like they were, they started that business during a world war and, and did it in a church, right? They started making them on their own. If you're not able to do that, this is one of the ways that you can start making your product. And you can look at a factory that's able to do something for you, make an equally high quality product and make it affordable for people so that you're accessible to more people and, and make a successful business. So that's like, I know a lot of people like don't understand that because the, sometimes they just see the price tag and they think like someone's marking it up because they want to or because it's like a significantly better product. A lot of times it's someone's putting a higher price tag on it to have it made in the USA and a lot of people can't afford it, which is unfortunate sometimes. And then there's like the flip side of that too. So that's just the dynamic of the industry in general. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely agree. Um, it just... 
Yeah, that's a that's a that's a whole topic subject on its own. Yes, um, absolutely. But but because because initially we were just thinking like, all right, in the United States, just higher quality products in general. Like if we go overseas, it's going to be a lower quality product. Um, and actually, in the long run, we found out that it was the opposite. We found out because in the United States, all the factories that we would talk to, none of them wanted to guarantee like our like patent pending like hex lock system that it would have good connectivity and everything. They were just kind of like, well, we'll we'll make the mold and like if it works, it works. If it doesn't, like that's your problem. And we we're just like, what? Like, thanks for a million dollars. Uh, yeah. It may or may not work. You could send no a check good. to my house. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, I was like, absolutely okay. not. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, so we actually ended up having to seek seek um, pretty much you know um, factories overseas, and so we tried we tried that. Uh, like that website, Alibaba. Yes. Oh, God. I was going to say, oh, did you man. hit that up? <laughs> Solid your, stuff there. Got your $10 <laughs> quote. Yeah. And um, and so once again, it was like, like just, just very, very quickly, I just found that like that was pretty much like gambling on green. Like mm. <laughs> you go to that, you go to the roulette table and instead of putting your money on red or black, you put it on green. I was like, <laughs> Alibaba's like, this seems a little sketchy, right? And so I'm not saying there's not good factories on there. You know, maybe there are. It's just like very quickly I found that that's just like a complete shot in the dark. Um, and so like I was kind of stuck in this like aspect of like, well, you know, we have a really good product. We want to, you know, go ahead with this product and, you know, manufacture it and everything. But it's like we can't find a supplier. And um, and so I actually – come from a from a business previously we did like um outdoor clothing or like um like apparel and so i was attending trade shows and there was there was a guy there and he was selling he was selling a product and he was selling kind of a higher quality product too and um and always i'd always kind of bullshit with him at the, at the trade shows and he was a he was a foreign guy and i talked to him at multiple trade shows and then one day i was just like i was like hey man like do you have any, do you have any kind of tips, you know, like you got any, you got any, you know, like tips. Throw me a bone, bro. I was like, I was like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make like a plastic product. And he was like, he was like, oh, oh, I don't know anything about that. And I was just like, okay. And he was like, he was like, but he was like, get out your phone right now. He's like, you're going to write this guy's number down. And, uh, he's like, this guy, he's a translator and this is what you're going to do. He's like, you're going to call him up and you're just going to like, Tell him you want to come and meet him in China, and then y'all are going to go around and tour China until you find a factory. And Dude. I was just like, it's like, what? I was like, what? And he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, just, just get this number, this guy's number down. <laughs> take the number. Yeah, yeah. Take, I was like, he's like, he's like, he's like, take the ch- number. He actually made me, he had me like download a Chinese app and like, you know, because like this guy is it, this guy's an American. He's like a very much Chinese guy. And, um, you know, the translator, and he was like, it's a, guy he lives in china and he speaks english and so you're just gonna go with him and just have him take you around and that's how you're gonna kind of figure it out mm-hmm. and so i pretty much took this guy's number down and i was just like had a couple text messages with them and i was like hey blah blah told me to text you like i'm interested in getting a product made and the guy was like okay great and i was like yeah see you in two weeks and I was like, I was like, so I want to do like a plastic product. He's like, oh, like I can look and try to find some plastic factories or whatever. And I was like, I was like, yeah, like I want to come there and tour plastic factories. And I was like, you want to get some together? And he was like, yeah, sure. And uh, he was like, when do you want to come? And I was just like, like when do I, when do I want to come? You know, like, or no, I'm yeah. sorry, he didn't ask when I wanted to come. I then was like, all right, go go kind of find some plastic factories. And so I ended up calling the guy back, the original guy. They gave me his number and I was like, hey, so I told him to like find some factories. Like, what do I do now? And he was like, well, man, he goes, you buy a plane ticket. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And he was like, he was like yeah, you just go to China. Mm-hmm. And um, so, t- so like, I was like, all right, hey, I'm coming to China. Like I'm coming in, you know, a week and a half, like I'm coming to China, right? And uh, so I told the guy and he was like, all right, great. And I looked and, um, and I was like, this is when I wanna come. And he was like, all right, great. And I was like, I'm just going to stop putting it off because I was like kind of nervous. I was like, oh, I don't know of like going to some, you know, foreign country. You're getting kidnapped. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like trying to put it off. I was like, you know what? I was like, screw it. I was like, I'm just going to go. And so I bought the, bought the plane ticket and everything. And the guy was like, hey, to come though, you have to have a visa to get in. 
you can't just come like you have to have like you have to be invited so oh, then man. you got to go through this process of like <laughs> getting letters and everything and so i had to apply for a visa and i had to then i was like how long does it normally take and it's like oh it normally takes a month and i was like yeah well i'm coming in a week and a half and he was like oh <laughs> man like oh you lot. better hurry up <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, shit. <laughs> and so I had to pay like a bunch of money to have my, my passport. So pretty much I was like, put my passport in a freaking FedEx overnight thing and sent it to the Chinese embassy. And so like had to pay all this money to have it rushed and everything. And so I, they rushed it. And I was leaving on a, uh, on a Monday morning, like Monday, super early, like 4 a.m. or something. And um, I got my passport. I was just like reading that tracking number. I got my passport back Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Oh man. And so the whole time, like, and then I tell my parents, I'm like, Hey, by the way, like I'm, going I'm, to being, China. I'm being in China, like all of yeah. September. And they're like, what? <laughs> they're like, you're going to communist country, China. Like they're like, they're going to kidnap you and you're going to die. Like, <laughs> I'll never see you again. And I was just like, I was like, no, like, I was like, I don't think that's the thing. Like, I'm pretty sure it's, it's good. Like, I'm going for business. Like, it has to, you know, they want business there, right? Like, oh, man. And it was just like, whoo. So you get but, there. Um, so you get there. How long were you actually there? Yeah. So I've, uh, so the first time I went, I went for two weeks, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so going did, over I, there, yeah. So going over there was kind of spooky because, you know, get on the plane or whatever. And, um, and I land, I land in Atlanta or whatever. And I'm just kind of like, I was trying to read a bunch of random articles really quick, like how to do business in China, Google, how to do business in China. And I was just reading all kinds of reckless stuff. And I was just like, oh man, yeah, I don't know what to do. And so I was like, I was like, well, let me just call that guy again and tell him I'm on my way to China. Right. So I'm in a layover and I call the guy and I'm like, Hey, so like I'm in Atlanta, I'm on my way to China right now. Like, oh, what do okay. I do? <laughs> and so I'm on the way to meet a guy that I've never seen before. I don't know what he looks like. I probably have a total of 15 text messages back and forth with him. And, uh, and, and I'm going to meet this guy from a contact that I got from a trade show. And this guy that, I, that, that gave me his number, I only met this guy like two or three times. I feel like you and Jeff should travel together more, more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This 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 sounds like business to me. This this sounds like just just the, not impressed by your story. He's like good good job doing business. <laughs> this, this is like just entrepreneurship in like the purest form. You know, like yeah. anybody out there who's like, I want to start a business. I want to. Oh, I got a great idea. I'm gonna file a patent and I'm gonna I'm gonna invent stuff like. Literally, Caleb is living this for you. So if you want to live vicariously through this episode, basically this is what you're signing up for. If you want to make stuff happen, uh, I love it, dude. I love this. Yeah. It's an adventure. I hope you're oh, working sure. rocks. Yeah. <laughs> right, so you're, going to, you're, you're going to meet this guy who is a mystery to you in pretty much every single way. Continue. Yeah. So, <laughs> so here I am in the Atlanta airport. And he's just like, oh man. I was like, I was like, you got any tips for me? Like, you know, I'm going over here. And he's like, well, man, like when you get there, you just got to, you brought some cash. I was like, yeah. He's like, you just exchange it, get some Chinese dollars. And, uh, and he goes, you'll do fine. And, <laughs> That's it. Solid and I was like, wait, I was like, man, I'm like, I'm going to China right now. Do like, I bow or not? <laughs> I was like, do I need what to do, do I do? What do I like, wear? He was like, he was like, you're American. You're fine. Just, just go, just go over there. They know you're going to be a piece of crap. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they already <laughs> hate you. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm sitting in Atlanta and uh, and I have a I have a flight going to Shanghai. Okay. And yep. so I'm I'm kind of I go to the where where it's supposed to leave and um and I start noticing I'm just looking around I'm just like man like there's a lot of like Asian people here you know I was like I was just looking around and I was like okay and I was like they have a bunch of Chinese people here right. And I look out the window, and the, the airplane just pulled up, and it's the biggest damn airplane I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like, it looks like a freaking four-story high, you know, like. They, building. like, flew like, an actual hotel out with wings. <laughs> yeah. They have, like, a truck pull up to the engine, and I'm like, dude, they could stick 
it's like stack five trucks on top of each other. And it's the size of this engine right now. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and like, I've never, I've never flown like anywhere really far international. And, um, and so I was like, all right, you know, this is cool. And, um, so like I get on, get on the plane or whatever. And I just kind of noticed that pretty much the majority of everyone on the plane was Chinese. And I was just like, I don't really see anyone that's like non-Chinese on this plane. Like, okay, I'm the only American dude on this plane going to Shanghai. <laughs> And, um, and so, you know, go to fly. It was like a 15 hour flight or something, something crazy just from Atlanta to Shanghai. And, um, the, the whole trip, by the way, just to get to where I was going was 26 hours or 27 hours in flights. Hey. Um, but this one flight was, I think on the way there, it's 14 hours and on the way back at 17 or it's either 17 or 14. It's, it's one of the two. Yep. Um, but like on the way there, you know, like flew over there. Um, they have a lot of alcohol on the flight usually. They do. They want you sleepy. <laughs> they want you very docile and tired. Well, I did. Chill. I did see they they removed the alcohol though. I don't know oh, if y'all saw no. that. Yeah, that's oh, a new that's thing, sad. man. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I'm never flying international again. Sorry. Yeah, don't go to China now. <laughs> yeah, but I, I remember it. I remember. It. I actually just just remembered this. I had uh, had my headphones on and. Um, <laughs> this is silly. Uh, I, I, so <laughs> earlier in the year, I was at an LSU football game and I sat next to this random dude and, um, and I was just kind of bullshitting with him. And he was like, he was like, Oh, like, what are you doing? I was like, yeah, I'm trying to design this product. And he was like, I was like, yeah, like I'm, you know, thinking about going to China here soon. And this was like, you know, a week or two before. And he was like, he was like, Oh, like I'm actually an international, international major, some, some shit. And um, he was like, he was like, in one of our classes, we actually got to go through the whole supply chain and go to, you know, overseas and see everything made and everything. He was like, man, you're going to learn a lot if you read this book. And, um, and it was like, it was like the Nike book about how, um, how Nike was found and everything. And it was like, oh, I was yeah. like, okay. I was like, all right, great. And so I listened to the audio book of this, of this, um, you know, of this book the whole way there. Really good book. Enjoyed the book. Did not learn anything about international business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was like, okay, really cool book. <laughs> this guy, I don't know why he told me to read this because I thought it was going to be like a how to do business in China. But um, nothing. Yeah. So it lands. I get off, I get off the, uh, the plane in Shanghai and I'm walking out and there's a, there's a greeter right there. And it's, it's a little, little Chinese lady. And I, I walk up and I have my ticket, you know, and she's just, she's going ticket, ticket, you know, and I hand her the ticket and she looks at it and she just slaps a sticker on my shoulder. <laughs> and I was just like, I looked at it, you know, and it was like, it was like the Delta logo and it had some Chinese writ writing underneath it, like a lot of Chinese writing. And on the top it said transfer. And I was like, okay. And I was like, so like, where do I go? Like, I'm trying to talk to her. And she's just like looking at me like, like nah, she's, just bro. Points, and she's just like that way. And I'm just like, all right. And so every single person on this plane is Chinese. So I was like, you know, I was like, all right, like whatever, I'll just, I'll just go this way. And so I start walking and right when I walk into this, like I, I exit the hallway, I get into the, the, the airport, every sign is Chinese. Weird. In Shanghai, no way. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I know, right? But I was just thinking like. Why is it just in English? What's Chinese wrong? and then English underneath or something. Like, no, every single oh, thing is Chinese. Bro. And I'm just like. There's lines everywhere, and there's this one oh, line. Of, I'm looking at my sticker. It says transfer, and I'm looking at this at this one like sign, and it has a bunch of Chinese, but underneath it says transfer. Yeah. And right next to it, they have a sign. It has a bunch of Chinese, and then it says uh, rivals. And that's the only two things that I saw. And I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, oh, my sticker says transfer. I'm going, I'm going to this this line. <laughs> and so I'm trying to go in this line, and there's this Chinese security guard. And he's just like yelling at me, just being like, you're not coming here. Like, you got to go over here. But he's not saying it in English. He's just yelling in Chinese, right? He knew, he knew you're an LSU fan. And he's like, dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have this little sticker. And um, and so he just kept pointing over here. And I was like, all right, like, I don't know what to do. And, you know, this this random guy, the only like American that I saw, um, walked up and he was like, man, you're not from here, are you? And I was just like, I was like, huh. yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, man. And he was like, he was like, do you speak Mandarin? And I was like, no. Fluently. And, uh, 
He was like, you can't read? I was like, no. And he was like, all right, well, follow me. He was like, he was like this is what you're going to do. And so when you get there, they actually they actually take your fingerprints. So like like initially we had to get there. We had to go to Rivals. They take all your fingerprints. They do a facial scan of you. Like they do all, all this stuff just to like, you know, check in per se. And so, you know, I had to do that. And then we went to customs. And he was like, so what are you here for? And I was like, well, I'm doing business in China. I was like, I'm trying to find a man, you know, like a, a factory. Yeah. And he was like, oh, so like, so you know, like Chinese customs, like, you know, like, and I was like, totally, bro. <laughs> no. Like, man, I was like, not, not really. And this guy's like, he looks at me, he's like, oh, man. He's like, you're, you're in trouble. trouble. <laughs> you are screwed. <laughs> he was like, you're in trouble, man. And I was just like. Oh, you're like, bro, I read this book about Nike. I, <laughs> I read know, this book. I Mr. know what Knight. I'm doing. He, did you hear about Nike? <laughs> yeah. I learned Mandarin on the flight over. <laughs> yeah. And well, well, the thing is, also, I thought the Nike book was funny because it was actually about Japan. It wasn't even about China. I, this guy. Was like, all right. So I was like, whoever told me about that, all right, whatever. And um, so I'm in this, I'm in the customs line and I'm asking this guy, I'm, I'm playing, I'm, you know, not 20 questions. We're playing a million questions. I'm just like, all right, what about this? What about this? I got my phone out. I'm just taking all these notes. And this guy's just telling me some reckless stuff. And I'm just like, he's pretty much just like, well, if you do this, you're going to blow the deal. They're not going to want to work with you. If you do this. <laughs> oh, he's giving you the how to. Oh. <laughs> he's pretty much like, oh, if you do this one thing. It's going to disrespect them so much that they're just going to be like, no way we're doing a deal with you. Like, absolutely not. Blink three times and then sneeze. Like, it's over. The deal yeah, is I'm done. Just, I'm just sitting here like, holy crap. And he was like, he was like, yeah. And then he asked me, he was like, well, do you have any, you know, do you have any Chinese money? And I was like, no, I have, you know, I brought, I brought, you know, American, cash. yeah, brought cash. Like the guy that I was, that told me to come over here. He just told me to like exchange it on the street. And he looked at me, he's like, exchange it on the street? He goes, that's illegal. <laughs> he's like, you would go to jail for that. Oh, and so no. I'm immediately going, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe this guy told me to come over here. Like, <laughs> I'm going to try to legit get you arrested. He literally was like, as soon as he gets arrested, I'm calling the Chinese cops. I'm going to figure out about this Busby box and I'm <laughs> taking it. <laughs> it was a long con. Yeah. <laughs> a long yeah. Con. But, but pretty much, um, so I went through customs. Customs was fine. But then the guy was like, all right, what flight are you on? I'm going to come sit with you and try to give you as much advice as possible. <laughs> Save your life. And, and so I'm listening to this guy, and he's saying all this reckless stuff like, you know, like the, like the, the government knows where you are at all times. The That's police true. could show up. There's a, all these laws that you're just not aware of. And so pretty <laughs> much he was just telling me that I'm going to be breaking laws and that any time the cops could show up and arrest me. And I was just like, okay. This is not America. Hmm, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, man, and you don't know anything about this? He was like, he was like, however much money you plan on spending in China, he goes, you have to be comfortable with just taking all of that money and putting it on a table and then just lighting it on fire. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dude, China is, yeah. the entire rest of the world operates on like the barter slash uh, like bribe system. Like, if you want to, like, go a place, you're like, they're like, no, you can't go there. are like, but what if I give you $500? They're like, all right, fine, you can go in that place. Like, it's just a different, it's not See, the same. That was the secret password. You figured <laughs> it the out. secret password was, like, X amount of yen. Like, here you go. It's just very different. It's very different. Your friend, you're, well, I'm assuming he's your friend now because you're alive and not in Chinese prison. Uh, so, yeah, your friend was right. <laughs> Well, so, well, so actually, I, I kind of feel like, so the whole time, because I'm freaking out, right? He's telling me all this stuff, and he's pretty much just like, you're going to blow the deal. You're not going to get a deal. You're going to break laws. You're going to get arrested. You're going to spend your life in Chinese prison. This is pretty much this guy summed up for me. Thanks, guy. And so so my flight from, from Shanghai to, uh, there's another really big city in China called Guangzhou. Yep. Um, flew into Guangzhou. Was not very, you know, relaxing. I'm just stressing out. I'm like, holy <laughs> crap, like. I'm freaking out. I was like, while it, while I was in Shanghai, when, when he left, he was like, all right, I, go get, I have to go get on my plane. I was literally like, if I could speak English, if I could speak Chinese, I would buy a flight home right now. I would buy a ticket and just go home. I was like, I'm freaking out right now, right? <laughs> I was like, I don't even know who this guy is. I don't know what he looks like, you know, like, mm -hmm. holy crap. And so right before I get on my flight, um, the, the translator was like, hey, so like, here's a picture of me. Like, look for me when I, when I get there. 
And um, and man, you I You found just... him, I'm assuming, when you landed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you found and translator so... guy with this Carmen San Diego picture, then what? Yeah, so he just like sent me a picture and I was just like, okay, like this is great. So like you know, find the guy or whatever. And um so like it was like my first time meeting the guy and it was just kind of like, you know, quiet quite awkward ride or whatever um but so like yeah I'll, I'll fast forward a bunch but pretty much we ended up touring all over china and you know went to some you know really you know um i guess like not the you know not the best factories uh, but we went to like a bunch of factories that were also like really good really high quality products um and so um most of these most of these factories they have all ndas and stuff and you know like you know, they can't tell you who they do business with and such, but if you happen to walk in and, you know, you're touring the factory and they just happen to be making someone else's product. Look you know, what I saw. Time. So, uh, but yeah, so we ended up touring all over, tour, touring all over China and um, we ended so up finding two, like, two weeks, trip one. Yeah. Trip one, two weeks, toured all over. Um, and so when I was, when I was looking at all these factories, I was like, all right, I want to, you know, factory that's really clean. I want to have a factory that has like a really good environment. Um, quality control was a big deal for me. Um, I wanted like good management and um, you wanted a premium. Like, like you a wanted good, a good work environment and everything. Pr- premium, premium, premium factory. Yeah, and so uh, we actually found this. We found this this one factory, and um, like they were actually making a bunch of like really you know, high quality products. And pretty much they were just like, Hey, you know, when you come and tour this factory, you can't tell anyone about like the stuff you see. And we're just like, all right, like that's fine. And so like a bunch of the factories were kind of like that, but, um, the one we ended up going with, they were just like, yeah. And so like, I looked and like a lot of the products they were making, they had some like really high quality products in there. I liked the, the quality control on it and everything. And, uh, and the, the owner was really, really cool. And so I really liked the, the owner and everything. And so that's in that's the the final factory we ended up going with. Um, but the but the culture over there in China is completely different than here because those guys get hammered. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> to do to do business, it's like a requirement to like be absolutely blackout. Like yes. oh, it's man. like you go to you go to dinner with them and they're just like, all right, we're gonna start chugging vodka. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like halfway through half, halfway through dinner. <laughs> Halfway through dinner, you look over and there's like a guy passed out on the table, and I'm like, "This is this is normal." And Make like, him sign the paperwork. Yeah. And so now I'm sitting here like drinking with these guys, and so the culture is if someone cheers you, then you have to drink with them, All right? We know and something it's, about that. It's, it's disrespectful if like if someone it says, "Oh, let's drink." Rude. Yeah. And so I'm there, and what they do is they they try to get you drunk. And so they go by, they bring you to lunch or they bring you to dinner and they'll have 10 people there and they start going down the line and they all start trying to cheers you, right? And you're and like that. hiding your cup after like a half hour. Like, bro, I can't handle it. Bro, yeah. I, I've been trading for this my whole life. I feel, yeah. like, I feel like rugby was like basically... Rugby was legit business. training for Chinese business. <laughs> but it was just like each, each one, it's not like a sip of beer. It's like, all right, let's take a shot. Yeah. Shot of vodka. Yep. Vodka. And so, and so what they, what they, what they said was, is that you can cheers them and they have to, they have to drink with you also. And so you can cheers multiple people at the same time. So you can cheers, you know, two people, or you could I've cheers the whole table. And so I would sit there and I'd be really aware when I'd be eating. And when I'd see someone about to like, try to grab their, try to grab their cup, I would cheers a bunch of people at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> So like someone would be like about to grab their shot glass and I knew they were going to cheers me and I'd be like, Oh, cheers. And I, <laughs> I got all like you guys. Of them, right? got them. <laughs> well played. And, uh, and so I was like, all right, if these guys are going to try to get me, you know, really drunk, I was like, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to beat them, beat them to the punch here. I got you because, back. Bro. <laughs> because you like go. also in China, like they're also just uh, like, like, like the culture, I guess just the people there, they're, they're a lot smaller. They're not, um they're not really tall. And like, so like, I'm I'm six foot and I was considered like a really big dude there. Everyone looked up at me and they were just like, man, this is a big, big guy. Like, 
Jeff, Jeff is just having dreams right now. He's like, dude, I would be the biggest man in the galaxy. <laughs> I'm a giant. <laughs> I'm a giant. <laughs> yeah. That's but it's just like, because they're so much smaller, they just can't drink as much alcohol. But these dudes would be sure. like, you know, passed out. Like, oh my you gosh. Know, you got a guy thrown up in the corner over here. Like, <laughs> well, it's just like college. It'd be great. Yeah, that but it's awesome. like like you would go to dinner and they'd be like, all right, well, let's carry these two guys out. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like we need to manufacture 15 Busley boxes just so we can make a stretcher and carry yes. this man. <laughs> <laughs> so you went so you went for your two weeks. You kind of you ID'd ID'd your, your ideal target. I'm assuming you went back another point because you said it was the first trip, which means there's probably a second. How many times did you go? Yeah, so I went I went for the uh, for the first order. We I went three times. Before nice. we before we got got the first product. So then by, the, by the third time you spoke Mandarin. Yes. <laughs> hey, I knew I knew how to say cheers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Gombe. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. They so got it. Yeah. So got it. So, or uh, or they have the other one. It's uh, finish this one. It's Gaiga. <laughs> Dude, I, I feel like I know how to do business. I would be very good at business. I just I'm throwing it out there. Like I'm ready to I'm ready to roll. So yeah. you you went through this unbelievable engineering process. You uh you had the fortune of a benefactor of information from two people who probably saved your life. Uh, you made it through finishing a lot of cheerses and uh you know, ID'd your supplier, got your order straight up. Managed to get everything, what, like 20 minutes before ICAST? How, <laughs> how long, that whole process probably took a couple of years, two, three years? So just the development was two years, and then the manufacturing, just to kind of like get the manufacturing settled up and like kind of figured out was about a year. Unbelievable. Uh, wow. That is, honestly, that almost seems like you did it really fast, but like, not really fast in like a rushed way, but like, I could imagine it taking a lot longer with someone who wasn't like, screw it, I'm going to China, I'm just going to figure this out. That's impressive. Right? Yeah, like, like so, so So people kind of ask me about it, and I'll, and I'll be like, you know, like, actually, it wasn't that bad. It was like, it was, <laughs> it was kind of easy. And then, I think like, you blacked out three quarters of it. <laughs> and, then, and then my girlfriend will look at me, and she's like, it's easy? She's like, she's like you literally work, like, 18-hour days. Like, you don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, well, you know, I guess that's true. And, like, so it's like looking back on it, I, like I think it did go really fast. Like I don't, I don't think you know that's that's very irregular for something like that to happen. Um, like I think, you know, like I just happened to do all of the right things, and you know, it did, it did happen. Um, you know, I think there is there's a lot of luck in there as well because once again, it's doing doing business there is is very risky. Just an aspect of like, let's say they with like I talked about the lid problem earlier. Let's say they would have just been like, nope, we're not paying for it. Well, it's like, what do you, what do you do? Yeah. It's like, you have to go try to get a Chinese attorney and like. You're out, you're without guess. a paddle on a creek and you're up it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so it, it, it really is a, it, it is like kind of a, a risk per se in, a, in establishing yeah. it. Um, like I'm very happy with my factory because uh, like we ended up into like a partnership and stuff. And like, um, so it's very much my, you know, like. My, like our factory is very much, you know, Busby factory. Um, and so like we did, we did get a really good deal with them and, you know, we have our quality control very high and, um, and we actually, all of our, all of our products are made from premium materials as well. So a lot of the other, like, or pretty much all of the other factory or not factories, um, boxes. like, like the boxes are made from like really low quality plastics. And so we actually source really high quality plastics. And so that's another reason our boxes are so expensive. So it's not only like the design and engineering and the quality control and all of that, um, but it's also just like the materials of our of our product just cost so much more. It's like our our cost is how much some other people sell their boxes for. Mm -hmm. And um, you could tell when you grab it though. I'll be honest. I wish I could like videotape myself pulling it out of the box for the first time. You could tell instantly. Every time I pick mine up out of my little Hobie tray, I'm like, holy crap! Every time. It is. It makes a legit difference. You 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 could have videotaped yourself the first time you did, but, but you chose that. not to. <laughs> Here we are. Just, we could we could hit the play button right now. So. <laughs> Mistakes are made. So Fair. I got so I have I got a I got a bunch of questions. So one, tell us a little bit like what is your fishing background? So for you, like how did you get into like fishing? Like what what's your standard like fishing setup? Like 
kind of how did you approach like what what did this be approached from like what's your background like in fishing yeah so i'm actually the 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 base background is like hunting so like my dad's like a very hardcore like deer hunter like i'm being like a little kid being like sleeping in the bottom of the deer stand and he'd be like waking me up son look at the deer you know Bro, there's one here <laughs> yeah there's deer and um and then i like got into duck hunting um, and I, I did a lot of fishing, but it was like all kind of like pond fishing, lake fishing. Um, and, um, like, like in high school, for example, like me and my, me and like one of my best friends, like we got in, that's when we really got into fishing kind of, kind of harder in high school. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of would, we would pull up a Google map and we would look at all of, you know, Baton Rouge, Prairieville area. And we'd be like, all right, here's all the neighborhoods. Let's look at the neighborhood lakes. Like, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And so, like, you know, I had a St. Croix rod with a Corrado on it, and uh, and I would just do Texas rig with, with red shad worm, man. Yeah, dude. Freaking yeah. balling over here. And, uh, <laughs> if you're in a spot with sweet bass, I bet you got some freaking awesome monsters. Yeah, and so we would we would bounce around, man, and we we caught, like, a lot of fish. And you were saying, like, earlier that the, the catch rate was how, how many? It's like you two an hour. Dude, the average is, like, two an hour. Yeah, like, some lakes we go to, man, I'd be like, it's like saltwater fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of those some of those neighborhood lakes. Um, yeah. But so actually, my dad though um, was like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about because we did a lot of hunting and such, and we like I uh, we had like a bunch of four wheelers, and my dad was like, hey, so I'm thinking about you know this year was really good for the business. I'm thinking about either you know buying you know two or three more four wheelers, or buying a boat. And so I was just kind of like, well, you know, like we already have a four wheeler, like why don't we get a boat? And so it was like the first year that blackjack came out. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that boat. Um, no, not at all. Yeah. So it's a, so it's a bay boat. Um, but it was like the first That's year blackjack. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it was the first year blackjack came out and he was like, yeah, like, like we're going to get this boat. And so it was actually like power poles just came out too. Oh yeah. Because, because I remember like, here we are like launching the boat. And of course we don't know what the hell we're doing. We're just like, Oh, my dad just bought a boat. He's like, all right, son, we're going to put this in the water here. Like <laughs> we're just like, we're back it up, right? Guys are certified captains or whatever, you know, they're just like, Oh man, these, these poor souls here. <laughs> yeah. That boy's about to drown himself. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but everyone would be like, man, what's that thing on the back of your boat there? That big rod. And my dad would be like, man, we're, yeah. we're in the CIA. That's a cannon. <laughs> Nailed it. And people just be like, oh, oh no, cool, a cannon. I'm not gonna knowing go them. It's just dad jokes for days. <laughs> yeah. And he never corrected them. So they're just yeah, it's like, also bye, don't mess with me. <laughs> yeah. But that's how that's how we kind of like slowly got into got into fishing. Um awesome. and then then he kind of like started letting me take it in college. And I was like, all right, you know, this is cool. He started just being like, Yeah, you know what? You can just take it because We'd go out and he'd be like bumping into stuff and he'd be like, all right, Caleb, just, just, just drive the boat, you know? And so I pretty much did everything. And he was just like, he was like, all right, you actually know how to do everything. I'm bad at all this stuff. Like, and, and so he was, I was always like, man, you know, you're going to let me take the boat. And he was like, well, you know, I don't know that things are worth a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> the most dad, this is the most dad trajectory of all time. Like yeah. get way in over your head on a boat and then be like, not be able to handle it and be like, son, you better figure this out or I'm going to slap you. And then like six months later, you're like, fine, I don't need this. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah. And then so, so like fast forward though, like in college, he finally was like, all right, I'll let you start taking the boat or whatever. And, um, <clears throat> and so we, we did a lot of fishing like on the coast. So we do like a lot of inshore fishing. Um, so like specks and reds. So we'll go down to um, like Leeville area, Fushaw, Grand Isle. And uh, we'll go out and catch like speckled trout and redfish. That is awesome. Yeah, casting nice. or trolling both? Yeah, so casting. So we'll That's do right. um, you know, like like I remember just being like, oh man, like we went out and my dad was like, oh, we'll get one of those reels and one of those rods and you know, because uh, he he really didn't know what was going on. He just like asked the person at the desk, so what do we need to catch us uh, specks? You know, like we the first <laughs> also count. hyper good dad move. Yeah. That way, when you screw it up, you're like that guy at the desk didn't know Jack. <laughs> this friggin' jerk. <laughs> uh, but that's that's when I kind of slowly started getting into higher quality products, though, because I remember like Shimano came out with that uh, that CI4 Plus. They had the str- the Stratic, and it was like a really lightweight. It was it was the Stratic, but it was like lightweight. And I was like, yeah, 
You know, my dad's it. That's the same damn thing, but twice as expensive. You don't need that. Like, <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, like, <laughs> Pump uh, breaks, dad. yeah, I was like, you know, not fully how it works, but like, uh, <laughs> not exactly. But, yeah. right. And it was like the same thing with like the Yeti ice chest. Like, you know, I was like one of the first yeah. people to like buy Yeti. And my dad was like, you bought how, spent how much money on an ice chest? Like, <laughs> what's wrong with our igloo, son? It's yeah. got broken hinges and it doesn't hold ice for more than five minutes, but there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> he was like, what's wrong with this one? And I'm like, dad, it doesn't have any latches on it, man. Like, <laughs> Bro, there's no <laughs> lid. That's a cup. <laughs> Literally no <Yeah>. lid. <laughs> dude, that is great. So another question I have is you talked a little bit about like, dude, the hours, right? You talk about like the, the countless hours spent, like running something on your own. Like, how many hats do you get to wear these days, right? You're like kind of a couple years into like, shipping boxes and showing people product and going to trade shows and you know trying to sell how many hats do you get to wear right now man I'm, I'm glad you used the hat thing that's like that's like one of my that's like the best way i describe it like when i'm talking to people i'm like man i wear a lot of hats like <laughs> and then like I always joke with my girlfriend and my girlfriend jokes with other people and she's like well caleb like what hat do you have on right now like yeah. so i'll be the customer service hat you know i'll be sending emails out or Maybe I'll be the quality control hat, you know, if I'm over there in China or the, you know, I'll be the, um, you know, the Instagram hat. hat or the trade show hat or the, you know, I'll be the, the help hat as in the aspect of setting up the booth, you know, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then we're shipping out orders as well. So, um, and you know, all warehouse sweaty. hat, there's uh, pretty much any kind of thing you can possibly think about. I wear all the hats, man. Dude, I love it because I think, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, people see the brand, right? Uh, they see the logo and and they see, you you know, you're all over the place, right? They can see you all over the place. And, you know, I think a lot of people take for granted, you know, maybe they don't know that the company is still relatively new or maybe they've never started a business or known someone to start a business and not really understanding like the tremendous amount of, you talked about the risk, right? Um, but the amount of work that goes into it, I think a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you know, it's a lot of work. You have to work like long, lo long days, not <laughs> under, not understanding. It's like, what is a long day? Let's, you don't, you don't understand. Like, there's that. no day, day and night merge together. Like I, I, I wake up, you know, answering customer, customer service calls, you know, reaching out to, to my, you know, my supplier or, or, or whoever's the next incoming load of boxes, or, you know, you were talking about. I got to figure out my warehouse situation, you know, whatever it is. Then, you know, by the lunchtime, I'm, I'm talking to customers. I'm trying to sell product. I'm trying to make lunch for myself. And then I go to sleep thinking about the 38 things that I like didn't get done today. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge, <laughs> that's a huge thing, especially like all of the just unlimited tasks. It's kind of like you constantly have this weight. You're just constantly like, well, shit, man, like, you know, this list, like, maybe if I can just catch up, I just got to get all this stuff done. But the thing is, it, it never actually gets done. And, um, and the people were like, you know, I, I mentioned I have a girlfriend and like, you know, like, of course, we have our times. It's kind of like, hey, she's like, Caleb, I just, I watch you work. That's all. That's all we do. Like, she's like, we hang out and we hang out. You're just working. Like, I just watch you work. Like, that's all that, mm -hmm. that's, that happens. And so it's like, you know, like, even though I'll go and do something per se, like, oh, like, we're going to go hang out with my friends or something, like, I'm sitting on calls and stuff. And like, you know, I go to dinner, and I'm talking with China in the middle of the of dinner, I have to leave and I come back and it's like, oh, yeah, the food came out 30 minutes ago, it's cold. And I'm just like, you know, like, bro, so, it's 630 a.m. in China. So I don't really yeah, give a yeah. shit. <laughs> so it's like, like, for example, we just we just had one of our one of our containers loaded um, a couple days ago. And so like I had to stay up until, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning until they finally finished everything over there. And it's like I went to sleep and then woke up at 8. And then it's just like – and that's that's a very common thing. And it's like, oh, you got to like make lunch. And like – and so like it's, it's very um, – like sometimes it's like, oh, I forgot to eat today. You know, like I'm just sitting <laughs> here grinding out working like, oh, food, like <laughs> – should've Jimmy and that. John are my two best friends. Please bring me lunch and dinner and my snacks. <laughs> yeah. But no, actually, I drink, I drink, it's probably so unhealthy. I drink a ton of protein shakes. I just have a bunch of like, and I don't even do <laughs> like the powder. Diet, man. I, don't, I don't even have time to, I don't even have time to mix the powder. I get the pre-mixed protein drinks, bulk oh, at Sam's. It's like, <laughs> 
It's like, oh, it's lunchtime. Let's let's grab one of those real quick. Whoop. All right, back to work. <laughs> hey, that's. But I think like you know, people talk about like the the grind and like what I hope when somebody I hope somebody listening to this like tries a Buzzy box, not because you know Caleb's here, uh, but because we told you that it's a sweet box before. I hope someone gets one. I hope someone opens it, sees that packaging, opens that bad boy up, starts using it, and is like as impressed with it as we have been, and is like, yo. There is a dude down in Louisiana who would much rather be on his goddamn boat and is literally busting his can to like get me the best box that I can get. I just really hope that like somebody's listening to this and gets to have the opportunity to do that because, you know, I I, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, talk to a lot of people who are like kind of starting up businesses. And dude, it so many times it gets ignored that it comes down to one person and the amount of time that they put into it. And dude, just like be able to put like a face to like a box that like was in my living room, <laughs> dude, it's insane. Yeah, and then and then especially just kind of like you're saying like, oh, he would rather be on the boat. It's like, for example, we'll go fishing. <laughs> and it's like, I'll bring one of my buddies, you know, he's fishing and it's like, I'll bring my girlfriend. And so my, my girlfriend helps a ton too. So I don't, I don't wear all the hats. Like she's very involved in the company. So like when y'all see the social media, she handles all the social media stuff. We could uh, tell it's very more, it's very organized, very beautiful, way better than whatever <laughs> it is that you would have been doing. So well done girlfriend. <laughs> For sure, yeah. yeah. She's no, she's, she's killing it. She helps me like fill the orders as well. I bounce nice. a bunch of ideas off her. I'm just like, Hey, what do you think if we do this or that? Like, and so she's she's very much in, involved. Like, of course, she's not on here, so she can't attest to it. But like, I look at him just like, man, she do she's in the other room. Like, oh, I do everything. Yeah. She's like, what? You don't do shit, Caleb. Like, I do everything. But no, like, she really does help me a ton. Like, I'm very very appreciative of it. Um, but it's just like that's one of the constant battles we have in the aspect of like the personal time. Like, because we go fishing, I'm like, hey, let's go fishing. And we go out there and like, I know where to catch speckled trout, right? And so we pull up and I'm like, all right, this is what you're going to use. You're going to cast right there and you're going to catch fish. And so like, you know, we're catching fish and, you know, we're all having fun or whatever, trying to have fun per se, because I am I know I'm like actually working. And, um, and so actually now that I think about it, the last time we went, we get out there and right when we get on the fish, I get a call from, you know, like, uh, you know, one of our retailers. And he's just like going on and on. And I want to be like, Hey man, like I did tell him, I was like, he was like, yeah, that's what you have to. And I was like, yeah, I'm actually fishing right now. And so I was hoping he was going to be like, all right, well, yeah, like have fun. But instead it was just like 30 minute conversation, you know? <laughs> and, um, yeah, but, dude, but, that's, what it, I, that's what it takes. And I'll be honest with you. We're appreciative of it. Cause obviously you've done something that's really cool. You've been, I mean, I, regardless of what happens, you've been successful. I've been unbelievably impressed with the box. Um, there's no way I could have done it. So, dude, my current hat off to you because that's very impressive. And we, we, dude, we love what you we love what you guys are doing. So, um, tell us a little bit about what you guys just released because I think you guys just released a new product. Yeah. So we so we just released the Colony 15. Um, so before we had the Colony 28, which was very had the exact same outside dimensions as like the commonly used like uh, 3,700 boxes. Um, so we did, at first we were just like, all right, these, these sizes aren't, you know, the most efficient, maybe we should do a different size. But then we were like, Hey, they need to fit in bass boats. They need to fit in the current other, you know, they need to be interchangeable with other products. Mm -hmm. And so my thoughts were that, you know, our product was such high quality product. Someone might be like, all right, $40. I don't know if I want to replace everything, but maybe they were going to buy one box. Mm -hmm. So my thought is they're going to buy that one box. They're going to interchange it with their other stuff and they're going to, all their other stuff is going to start breaking and they're going to use the other stuff and they're going to be like, man, there's so many problems with all these other boxes. This is my favorite box. So over time, they're going to slowly replace everything with Busby. And mm -hmm. so I still, I still believe that like, even though like other people have come out with other boxes, um, I've heard from people just being like, Hey, like, you know, we've used other people, we've used yours, like your box is really, you know, like we like that the best. Mm -hmm. um, and that's definitely something that I'm excited to say because I couldn't really produce a, a lower quality product. Cause like, I want to be very proud of the product being like, man, this is, you know, what I put all my hard work in is something that I'm proud to say that like, you know, we, we, we released. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but so the Colony 28 is the same size as the 3700, and we just released the Colony 15. So it's the same it's the same uh, size as like the 3600 boxes. Um, and so wh- where the names come from, um, Colony 28 is because there's 28 grid spots on mm-hmm. in our box, so you could put 28 one by ones. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people get confused. They they look at the one by one and they're like, oh, what is this one inch by one inch? Or they look at the one by four and it's like one by four inches. And it's actually one grid spot by four grid spots. And so yeah. that's how much space it takes up in the in the uh, the box. So like a one by four, for example, is actually seven and a half inches long. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Colony 15 is 15 units. And so it's actually interchangeable. So what's really cool is you can take the bins out of your Colony 28 and mix them with the Colony 15. So like, for example, you have a bunch of boxes and you're like, all right, I have two or three boxes here and I want to, you know, consolidate them into, let's say a colony 28. You could do that right now, but now let's say you have a colony 28 or you have two colony 28s and you want to put them really, really small and mobile. So you can put them in a colony 15 mm-hmm. and so just by simply popping out the bins and interchanging them. That's rad. The 15, I, I, I need to get 15 just so I to see it. Cause like, dude, it is, it's almost like hard to imagine that much. Like, awesome compact into one little box like I gotta, <laughs> i'm gonna have to get yeah. one just to i just want to just a it. mini look, version of the this looks so <laughs> looks like, so sweet so yeah um yeah i know you guys are working on a ton of stuff i'm not going to make you divulge your uh, trade secrets i Tell think it's really cool. everything <laughs> yeah just on the just pushing them i love that you guys just released a, a smaller size box i think a lot of people are going to find that one obviously like close to the price range get them introduced into busby and and hopefully get them up into uh a whole stack of 28s um but yeah, dude, thank you so much for the time. Honestly, I can't thank you enough. We've been using the boxes. I honestly, it's like I'm a I'm a fanboy. I'm gonna be honest with you. Been using them. I love it. Um, I tell I tell everyone about them. Um, you know, post pictures of me using them because I think they're great. Um, and I think it's a nice alternative that you know a lot of people just go to what they see and you know are not out there trying new things. So that's kind of one thing that we try and do for other people and stumbled across the buzzy box and we love it so it's uh, been a pleasure to have you and thank you so much for the time it was this is really cool awesome yeah yeah i definitely appreciate y'all having me on fellas and it was definitely good kind of being able to share the story about busby and everything so oh, we're gonna have to have you on and we're just gonna have to talk about the second trip to china that can be its own episode <laughs> oh, man. The second, second and trip. third <laughs> well we're actually gonna have to break break the second one into two podcasts but <laughs> oh man wait dude oh, that's man if that's not a teaser i don't know what is dude you need your own show you just teased yeah. two episodes in one sentence I feel like there's an entire podcast that's just like your trips. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, season. No, I, season. <laughs> hey, I came, I came back to, came back from China, and all my buddies were just like, Caleb, are you, are you even a real person? Like, <laughs> like we feel, we feel like just your whole life is just you, like, just, just not even being real, man. Just like these crazy stories you have. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh man. Just- that's awesome, man. I appreciate you being on. Like, and and I'll just I'll kind of leave it with this, and then we'll do our our little outro spiel here. But I will say that Paul bought the Busby first, and I was skeptical, and I was like, ah, I'll, I'll let Paul get it. I'll let Paul get it, and we'll see what this thing's all about. And he got it. He unboxed it. He used it on a trip, and I I like I used it with him when we were filming. Uh, Gosh, I don't know. It was like maybe two months ago now. We compared it to the, um, what was it the Bass Mafia and the Plano Edge, right? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's all right. I think in the video, I literally said like, eh, it's all right. I still like it. <laughs> and then that day, I bought that Busby. And then when I got it in, I was like, holy crap. And now, like I said, it's always in the front of my boat. And now I, I will say this, and maybe anybody who's actually made it to this point in the episode can appreciate this as well. But like, like Paul was saying, you got to appreciate the level of work and like just crazy shit that went into this thing coming into <laughs> existence. When I look at that box now, I got to say, I'm going to appreciate it more. I will. Like, and it, it, it's coming from me being a skeptic at first. Like, well, I, I do a lot on uh, my YouTube channel is like review these different products that I have. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Like not everything's great. Right. Uh, and that was, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, oh, there's a new guy on the market and nobody can be Plano. Right. 
I was like, ah, well, I guess I'm wrong (laughs) (laughs) in this circumstance. Uh, But it's awesome, man. I really appreciate you being on the show. And once again, I do want to give you a chance here. If anybody's looking to follow you or learn more about, say, the Colony 15 and all these different products that you guys might be coming out, hashtag net gators and stuff like that, uh, where (laughs) where should they be following you again? Yeah, so on Instagram, it's Busby Fishing. And on Facebook, it's Busby Fishing. And then our website is just busby.com. So that's B-U-Z-B-E.com. Awesome. You guys heard it here first. And they are very bee-friendly. Bees will be attracted to your boxes. You're you're welcome, maybe, or sorry. Uh, But again, if you guys like the episode, be sure to subscribe to the Burley Fishing Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Follow us, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, I guess now, you know, at Burley Fishing on all those things. I still think it's a joke. I'm never going to let it down. <laughs> nonsense app. I'm just going to keep doing it until maybe something happens. Uh, and then follow us on YouTube, uh, Burley Fishing, and stay tuned for more good content, more awesome interviews like this. And we're going to have to, I think we're going to have to have you back, Caleb. I don't know what it's going to cost, but <laughs> we're going <laughs> to. We're going to make it happen. Uh, But that's all we got for you guys today. So we will see you out on the water.